Okay, hello, welcome to this video. We're going to talk once again about Epcal, you know, the beautiful place known as Epcal. So uh, let's take a look at uh, the latest here. We have an article from Riverhead Local uh, about this play. And, and again, it's just, you know, I'm so glad that people are on our side. And I'm glad that we're getting momentum against this. So here is this an opinion. It says, believe your own eyes and ears, not the version of reality the Epcal developer wants you to believe. All right. So, and again, these are the developers here. Do these people look like people you can trust? Uh, I don't think so. So here we go. Recent developments in the tangled web we call Epcal have a lot of residents puzzled, scratching their heads and trying to figure out just what is going on here. After a detailed presentation of plans at a Riverhead Industrial Development Agency meeting last September produced an outcry from residents alarmed by talk of an air cargo hub at the Calvertson Enterprise Park, the developer almost immediately started to backpedal. The developer's work to distance himself from the substance of that presentation is summed up here with the links to the original reports. Uh, we believe, in short, that CAT, which is Calvertson Aviation and Technology, has been conducting a gaslighting campaign since its September 21st IDA presentation bombed with the public. Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines gaslighting as psychological manipulation of a person usually over an extended period of time that causes the victim to question the validity of their own thoughts, perception of reality, or memories, uh, and typically leads to confusion, loss of confidence, and self-esteem. CAT representatives at first claimed their presentation was misrepresented, implying that it had being it was being mischaracterized by opponents of the deal who have an agenda, or maybe the public just overreacted. There has been a lot of word smithing by CAT representatives, especially its attorneys, using carefully chosen words that seem designed to leave enough wiggle room big enough to maneuver a large debt through. We've heard Republican supervisor candidate council member Tim Hubbard say he had not seen Katz's plans prior to last September's presentation to the IDA, yet he and the rest of the board voted unanimously to, co uh, to become co-applicants with Cat for IDA tax benefits. Most, more recently, Hubbard said he is opposed to air cargo at EPCAL. I will never let that happen, he said. Hubbard's declaration, made in a guest column published by Riverhead Local, was closely followed by a response from Cat CEO Justin Germazine, that said, CAT will continue to work with the town to create a pro plan for a project that is consistent with the town's vision for EPCAL and in compliance with the adopt studies and regulations that govern its use. Notable wordsmithing here, too. Riverhead Local asked Germazine a few questions in response to his guest column submission, which was published here in its entirety. Will Triple Five plans include logistics and distribution buildings that will be leased to tenants which receive cargo via the runways, as detailed? in the plans presented at the September 21st, 2022 IDA meeting? If so, will this be scaled back at all? Triple, will Triple Five be amending its IDA joint application for benefits to reflect its revised plans? If so, has any such amended plan been submitted or do you have a date by which you intend to submit them? And will Triple Five publicly present the revised plans to the town board prior to the IDA hearing? Germazine responded, thanking Riverhead Local for publishing his guest column in its entirety, and said, Allow me to consider the questions you pose with the understanding that my response may not be able to make this week's deadline for your paper. And that was over a month ago. As of today, just crickets. So Germazine is not responding. And again, it just goes to show you how sleazy these developers are. I mean, it's the destination of sleazy. I mean, just look at the picture of them. Don't these people look sleazy to you? Let me go back to where I was. So, last week, Germazine spoke at a public information ses session hosted by the Riverhead IDA. Cat's new take on the public's quote-unquote confusion following last year's IDA presentation? According to Justin Germazine, an air cargo use was referenced by a professional consultant as a hypothetical concept of a full build-out. We should have immediately flagged it for what it was, and more importantly, what it, was, what it is not. Those concepts are not included in the, any plan we are placing before the IDA or the town board. Seriously? The air cargo thing was sort of a misstatement by a consultant that should have been immediately flagged for what it was. 
In an interview following last week's information session, CAT attorney Chris Kent took it a bit further. Sometimes when working with consultants, engineers, architects, they repair something and that's what gets stuck in their head, he said. And I was very angry that day because we had not, that was not what we had decided we were going forward with. Kent and another attorney were in the room during the presentation. He asked why he did not correct the consultant at the September 22, 2022 board meeting. He said he didn't want to disrupt the presentation. <laughs> if this is making your head explode, join the club. But relax, you're not crazy. And you haven't entered the twilight zone, though you may feel that way. That's what gaslighting is all about. What you're being told patently is demonstratively false. Let's look at the facts uh, of how this went down so we can all rest uh, secure in our perception of reality. Katz proposed use of the site for freight deliveries by cargo jets, the air cargo hub, presented by the company on September 21st last year is no more a figment of your imagination than it is a misstatement by a consultant who got something stuck in his head and went rogue during what certainly appeared to be a very coordinated scripted presentation. And you can watch the video over here. They have a link. The written application to the IDA signed by Riverhead Community Development Director Dawn Thomas with, his author, with the authorization of the unanimous vote of the town board spells it out for phase one. 600,000 square feet of logistics warehouse distribution, two 50-tall foot-tall logistics buildings, each 300,000 square, square feet along the 10,000-foot active runway, as well as two smaller buildings totaling 400,000 square feet set back from the runways for industrial, commercial, environmental, energy, and academic uses, with up to 9 million square feet in future phases. Cat intends to lease the buildings if plan it plans to construct, the applicant says. Cat submitted an economic in in analysis report with this application the re report dated August 2022 was prepared by James Lima Planning Development. As CAT attorney Peter Curry, like Chris Kent, a partner of the in the Pharrell Fitz Fritz law firm, stated in his letter to the Riverhead IDA, which accompanied the application for tax exemptions. The analysis discusses several positive trends in the aeronautics field that will benefit EPCAL. First, the need for air freight is predicted to grow annually. Second, with aircraft fleet sizes recovering from the effects of COVID-19, the demand for aviation maintenance, repair, and overhaul will increase significantly. Third, the industry is pushing into the manufacture of vehicles that can reach low Earth orbit, and this and this an increasing interest in sustainable practices of manufacturing is causing a surge in research and development. For, finally, defense spending remains robust, including on aeronautics. Curry noted that his client will invest at least $1 million to repair and upgrade the Eastern Runway, which the contract of sale with the town mandates, so that it can accommodate cargo planes and other manned aircraft. During the presentation itself, both an engineer and an air architect for the applicant spoke in a very positive terms about the potential for air cargo at the site, which would be the only air cargo facility downstate beside JFK. Katz Architect displayed renderings at the September 22 IDA meeting that clearly depicted those logistics buildings with jets parked on the aprons as accessed by the relocated taxiways and tractor trailer access on the opposite side of the buildings. Proposed development plans prepared by Katz Architect depict the location of the buildings compromised as 1A, 1B, and 2. Other than Phase 1A's three flex buildings compromising 400,000 square feet, which are set back from the runway, the rest of the buildings depicted are all massive logistics distribution buildings totaling more than 8 million square feet lining the two runways and massive parking structures providing 8,640 parking spaces. This does not include tractors, trailers, surface parking also depicted in the plan. So all this, of course, planned for the middle of the Pine Barrens, which, again, is almost unconscionable that this could even be entertained. So getting back to the uh, opinion piece here. A reference by a consultant, a concept that just got stuck in a consultant's head and was blurted out unexpectedly at Kat's most important presentation years perhaps ever. Something that made attorney Kent very angry, though he didn't see fit to correct the record. Come on, fellas. Riverhead residents are not as stupid as you seem to think. If Kat at this point came forward and said it her her... It has heard the community loud and clear and is revising its plans. We respect that. We might even we might remain skeptical, but we respect that sentiment and wait and see what they produce. 
Instead, they parse words, talk about how they, how any use at the site will comply with zoning. Newsflash, whoever CAT leases its buildings to can use the runways to land cargo planes without violating the zoning. And continue to deny that we saw and heard what we saw and we heard last se September. If there was any mistake made at se last September's presentation, it's that CAT actually showed us, showed us their plans. If the town board really does want to stop an air cargo use at EPCAL, it should force CAT's hand now before this moves another step forward. The town board should have its lawyers draw up an inroad, ironclad de declaration of covenants and restrictions that would clearly prohibit the use, no gaping loopholes, no muddled language, which would be executed and will bind CAT and any future owner, tenant, or successor uh, interest. It should demand a contract amendment that will require CAT to execute covenants and restrictions before any legal title or leasehold interest in the land is conveyed to CAT or any, any entity that might succeed it, whether owned by Triple Five or anyone else. It should make execution of the covenants and restrictions a mandatory requirement of any lease or project agreement between CAT and the Riverhead IDA should the IDA approve CAT's application for tax exemptions. The town should release the Declaration of Covenants and Restrictions to the public when it makes the demand on CAT and require CAT to respond publicly. These steps will help ensure there are no more behind-the-scenes shenanigans, wheeling and dealing that work against the public interest. No more semantics, no more parsing of words, no more double talk, no more gaslighting. As we said in a previous editorial, which, in which we laid out the facts of CAT's presentation and their subsequent damage control efforts, the people of Riverhead are not stupid. So don't treat us that way. We get it. Do you? So a great uh, article there from a great opinion piece written by uh, the uh, uh, written by Riverhead Local about EPCAL. And here's another one here. Heart of Riverhead Civic to produ pro pro host program about plans for EPCAL site Thursday at Vail Leave It. So, uh, and again, this is a picture right here of the renderings. Your Pine Barrens gone, replaced by big warehouse buildings, lots of trucks, big jets uh, coming in. The Heart of Riverhead uh, Civic Association is hosting a, an EPCAL watch group at the Civic's monthly meeting Thursday evening for an update on the plans at Riverhead uh, Enterprise Park. The meeting, which is open to the public, will be held at Vale Leave It Music Hall on Peconic Avenue from 6.30 to 8 p.m. With EPCAL headlining our news for much of the past seven years and EPCAL Watch keeping a close eye on developments for just as long, who better to explain the current plans and potential impact on Riverhead and our surrounding towns? It's a hot topic, and we're grateful the chance to be better involved, the leaders of Heart and Riverhead said in inviting members to the meeting. Thursday's presentation by members of EPCAL Watch and their invited panelists will include plans aired by Calvertin Aviation and Technology, Triple Five Company, for vacant land at the former Grumman Manufacturing Plant. Calvertin, Calvertin Aviation and Technology is in contract to purchase 1,644 acres of vacant land, including the site's two runways from the town of Riverhead for $40 million. The meeting comes as debate over CAT's proposed uses for the site heats up in the run-up to the 2023 local election. The sale to CAT and their plans have been controversial from the start. Controversy boiled over after the CAT development team presented the company's plans at the September 21st Riverhead Industrial Development Agency meeting. It was the first time the plans were publicly aired, and the town board, this was last year, member, uh, the town board members later said, even though they authorized a joint application with CAT for IDA benefits, said they had not seen the plans prior to the presentation. All right. Uh, and we've already read this already. They picked 8.24 million square feet of multi-level Distribution logistics buildings constructed along the site's two runways and one 400,000 square foot single story rail distribution building. This plans show new aprons adjoining the distribution and logistics buildings on both runways to accommodate cargo planes and new taxiways that will link the aprons to the runways. The plans also show three two story flex buildings set back from the eastern runway that would house tenants in the aeronautics, industrial, aviation, environmental, energy, medical, and educational fields as CAT attorney Peter Curry described the uses during the IDA meeting. Two parking structures. Are you sick? I feel like throwing up. Two <laughs> two parking uh, uh, structures, each 4.2 million square feet in size, and each providing 4,320 parking spaces. And additional service parking areas seem to be de depicted around the flex buildings. All right. So Katz Engineer and Architect both described the... Uh, I'm not going to read this whole thing because we kind of went over it in the other thing already. Um but uh, this, you can see people are against this, and like I said, I'll, 
I mean, people are against this. This is terrible for the environment. It's it, it really. I'm, we're going to just go ahead and look at the site again and show you where this is. So we look at Long Island here, right? So this is in the Pine Barrens area, right here. This area right here, it's actually in green. They put it in green, All right? But this is the area right here, right in the heart of the Pine Barrens. They want to build this, all right? So, I mean, it's incomprehensible. How could the state even, I mean, where is New York State? Where's the governor? Where's the DEC? They should be putting a stop to this, like, right away, all right? Um, you know, but they're, they're, like I said, they're not doing anything. This is not, we're not living in New Jersey, unfortunately. So, you know, they, they tr you know, it's up to the people to stop this because our elected officials don't seem to be getting the message. Uh, and again, all this will have a devastating impact on the Pine Barrens. In fact, if this does, uh, this could be, you know, a, this could be the end of the Pine Barrens, at least in this, uh, in this area here. I mean, it just, well, we can't allow this to happen. Um, we can't allow this to happen. I know people will say, well, Grumman was there. Grumman was there. Gr this was so much more than what Grumman did. You have no idea what these cargo freight hubs look like. Uh, well, let's show you what it would look like, being that there's a cargo freight hub at JFK. So I think, yeah, maybe this, this is what it would look like right here. All right. All right. I'll show you what it looks like on the ground. All right. You want to see what they want to turn it into? Um, yeah, that's what they want to turn it into. This kind of stuff right here. All right. Big buildings in the middle of the Pine Barrens. All right. Uh, and, well, yeah, another area, Newark. Newark is another, uh, a lot of cargo hubs around here. You know? Uh, yeah, you ride along the turnpike. That's what they're going to turn it into. Yeah, you know, you know, this is what they want to turn it into. All right, you want to see this? Do you want to see this in the Pine Barrens? I don't think so. All right? At least New Jersey keeps it in the, in the, over here, and they keep their Pine Barrens protected. All right, um, so this is a real big fight for the Long Island Pine Barrens, and this project has to be stopped. Uh, it's it's really one of the biggest things to ever happen. The biggest, I think this is the worst development ever proposed for the Pine Barrens, ever, uh, and uh, it has to be stopped. It's really, it's stopping this development is, 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 if we don't stop it, then we lose the Pine Barrens, and that's, that's going to be very disturbing, uh, and we can't have that happen. So thank you for watching this video. Take care, and if you live out there, uh, you know, y this has to be stopped. A and shame on the governor for not stopping this. Shame on the DEC, New York State DEC. They are absolutely pathetic, uh, as, uh, once again, uh, you know, for not, you know, this this is a non-starter. This project needs to be done. It needs to be stopped. Uh, it needs to be finished, as in finished and dead and buried six feet under, and we save our pine barrens. That's the only logical outcome that there is to this whole thing and it's been going on long enough and we need to say enough is enough and we need to say that's it this is going to be a land preserve uh we're going to preserve all of this um and uh and and save the pine barrens so thank you for watching and take care